I grew up in the country. It was 20 miles to the closest big city, which was St. Charles, Missouri. I was born in St. Charles Hospital. My mom had had six births before me. Two of them died right after birth. When I was born, they thought I was going to die. So they had this brand new procedure where they made a complete blood transfer, where they withdrew my blood and immediately infused nun's blood. That they, as they tell me, I'm laying next to the nun and they're draining it from her and putting it into me when I was just like a day or so old. So I'm actually in the medical books as the first person to have that done west of the Mississippi. I was basically raised like an only child because all my brothers and sisters, my youngest, my brother closest to me was 11 and by the time I was eight, he got married at 18. All the rest were out of the house. So I had the house to myself and all my nieces and nephews are just four or five years younger than me. Because I lived in the country, everything was open and you'd leave in the morning and play all day and do what you wanted to do, then come home for lunch and come home for supper and play with the kids in the neighborhood. It was just a village of about 12 houses, maybe a mile circle. In the next town, this was All Saints Village, the next town was Cottleville where we went to church and I went to grade school. There's two grades per, per room. I went there through first through eighth and then went to high school for nine through 11 in O'Fallon, Missouri. So I went to my senior year at yet another high school. So that was really interesting to change high schools in my senior year after being with the same group of kids since grade school. Halloween was fun because you would go house to house and each one you'd have to, it was trick or treat, but they made you do a trick in order to get the treat. But each of the treats was a big candy bar or a can caramel apple or big popcorn ball. Everything was really big and special, homemade, most of it. Tag, hide and seek. I love to ride my bike around this. It was all gravel. And one of the fun things I used, we used to love to do about a half a mile from the house, what they called the woods, it was quite dense, probably about two or three acres. And on one side was a big lake. And we would go, thinking of it, of it now, I'm surprised none of us didn't drown or something because we'd jump around and there'd be gullies and we'd dare each other to jump over. And in the wintertime, we'd walk out and see who could walk its furthest before it started cracking and all that fun stuff. But the kids were anywhere from age, say, four to you know, eight or 10, 12, all various age, maybe six, eight kids total in the neighborhood. My dad worked in St. Louis at McDonald Aircraft Company. His claim to fame is he was worked in the division that made the spacecrafts and the jets and all that. He was a machinist. He, she stayed home till he retired at 65 when I was at, I guess, the South Warren High School. And then she went to work as a little dress shop and she worked there until she was 70 years old because it got to the point where she would tell them that she felt she should pay them for working just to have a reason to get out of the house once dad died. I was pretty much a home buddy. Went to school, came home. My dad was uh, in the Army, stationed in Japan when I was born. He was an electrician. Uh, the, it was 1945, so the war had already been won, and he was part of the occupation force that went in, built barracks uh, throughout the country. Uh, my parents were, particularly my mother, was very strict. One night, my mother, uh, cooked uh, liver, hate liver. And she had breaded it like she did breaded pork chops. And I'm eating this thing and you know, I'll take a bite, take another bite. And I said, this breaded pork takes an awful lot like liver. And my Aunt Annie couldn't stop from giggling. So the game was up. 
My mom was so mad at her for because I had actually eaten a little bit of it. I loved playing the violin, but I hated to practice, just like any kid. So one birthday, all Aunt Annie gave me was a jar of baby aspirin. There was baby aspirin in the cabinet, so <clears throat> that bottle got, I was really disappointed. You know, I expected something nice, and I, all I get was baby aspirin from her. And she says, you know, you're always, you're always complaining that you're, you don't feel good and don't want to practice, so I figured you needed the baby aspirin. And it was probably a good year before we got to that jar of baby aspirin. And when it opened it up, she had money rolled up inside <laughs> the bottle. Mom and dad are both uh, short. Mom was uh, five foot one and dad was five foot three. Um, and the basement uh, had very low joists and they fit perfectly. Uh, we had a, a two-story house with a basement. Uh, the, the bathroom and shower dad had actually built uh, in the basement and then the, the kitchen and living room were on the uh, first floor and then there were two bedrooms upstairs. My dad knew a lot about electricity. I mean he he taught me tons and tons of stuff. I mean he was uh, a very precise um, do-it-yourselfer. Uh, he kept the house in shape. He had a very nice workshop, uh, bench saw, uh, drill press, um, all every tool had a had a uh, it was hung on the on pegboard or on uh, masonite that he had put the things as opposed to buying the hooks. He had taken and and bent little uh, little hooks and put them in there so that you could slip your pliers in there. But all his tools were were there. Uh, he had uh, racks and racks of uh, baby food jars with all the the screws and nuts uh, sorted out. I've still got boxes of them at the house that uh, haven't been integrated into, into my stuff. My maiden name is Cluton Camper. So with Cluton Camper, Crow Miller, Kiesler, so forth, Coons. We all sat in alphabetical order. I saw her and decided I wanted to pursue her, and so pursue I did. I'd ask her out for walks, and I'd hang around when she got back for in the evening from, uh, we, we could go home on the weekend, she did. She was still going out on other dates, and, and uh, she really didn't want to have anything to do with me for quite a while. Eventually, she started to go out with me. Well, we started on 63, and the school was three years long, so we graduated in 66, got married, a week after graduation. Well, we were engaged about six months before. Yeah, June or something. Yes, before uh, we got married in October. We were uh, both, nur you know, graduate nurses uh, would be in uh, the end of September. And um, so we were eligible to go into the Air Force as second lieutenants. You had a choice, either sign up or get drafted. <laughs> We got a call from CBS and they said, you probably don't believe this. He said, so here's a number, call me back. And of course, called back and they said, this is CBS. I mean, anybody could have, thinking in retrospect, anybody could, could have done that. And they said, we want you to be on I've Got a Secret. From New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. <laughs> they said that they would fly us to New York City. And we have our next contestants, please. And they said, uh, we understand you, you, know, you didn't get a honeymoon, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll fly you in uh, on the, the Friday before. We'll give you some money to spend over the weekend. And then you come in uh, on Monday for the uh, filming and then uh, fly you back home on Tuesday. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kuntz, congratulations are in order. I understand that you were just recently married. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations indeed. It's always a pleasure to have uh, honeymooners on our, on our show. Now we, we, we flew to New York, we'll and you, um, I called this number, and somebody came and handed me an envelope of money. Uh, the hospital that we worked for set up uh, reservations for the Persian room at the Plaza Hotel, which was big stuff at the time. 
I imagine that means the honeymoon is over, huh? No. Oh, all right. Let me hear about that. <laughs> that was our secret. The secret was that we both joined the Air Force together. They figured I was um, of military age, so, you know, what could they do together? And they, so they guessed it actually pretty quickly. Bill and I would like to know whether or not um, you enlisted and your wife enlisted also. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we even remember what we had for, uh, for dinner. My 21st birthday. And then she, she so she had her first drink, uh, legal drink, in, uh, uh, at her 21st birthday to find out that in New York, you could drink at 18. Well, we wish you both the best of luck, and we hope that you can uh, stay together wherever you go. And thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. Ten days after we actually signed the paperwork, I got my draft notice in the mail. We moved to Altus, Oklahoma for him to have his initial training. And then we went to Amarillo, Texas, and we had a little house. and. I played house and had a baby and then waited for him to go to Vietnam. I never really had to be on the front line. Uh, what I did was in-country air vac. Uh, I was fixed wing aircraft, aircraft uh, C-130 aircraft and C-123s and a couple of C-7 caribous. I was stationed in Da Nang. Um, we, would, we would fly up to, to Dong Ha, pick up uh, uh, whoever they had manifested for us, that would be uh, Marines at, at that post, and then we'd fly and stop at a number of places down the coast, back to Da Nang. We would uh, offload patients for the either the Army or the Air Force hospitals in Da Nang, and then we'd pick up patients to go south. And then we'd fly south, uh, stopping at a number of places. Uh, there was a place called Tuiwa, uh, was sort of in inland, not not on the coast. We, uh, our patients would go into their little um, little hospital there. We'd sleep the night, get back in the plane in the morning, and then we'd fly again a number of places. Usually ending up in either Cameron Bay or Saigon. We we uh, still took live fire from uh, in the planes, uh, either on the ground or flying several times, but. Uh, had some hectic, hairy, hairy flights, but yeah. all in all, it was much, much safer than, than just about anybody else experienced. You gained weight. I was lifting litters because you'd stack the litters in the in the air, aircraft. That was probably the buffest I've ever been. Was the year in Vietnam? I was driving around the flight line, uh, just uh, getting ready to go out on the flight, and I got an order, Lieutenant Kunz. You got your orders. You're going to Germany. V spot in Germany. So uh, came home, uh, visited the family, and uh, her and Leanne and I flew off to Germany. So close because you could go to you're just hours from Paris and Italy and Holland and Austria and just travel, travel. It was great fun, and that's where Carl was born after two years. So. My junior. Yeah, Carl. Charles Jr. Vietnam, I, I was working as a community health nurse in St. Charles. So I had a full-time job while he was in Vietnam. And then I was a full-time mom because we went to Germany and overseas you really can't, a civilian can't really get a job in a German because I didn't know enough German. I didn't work at Altus either. Cause volunteer. Then I had, yeah, I did a lot of volunteer with the Red Cross. And um, that yeah, I did the volunteering when I had Alicia and Leanne, and that was funny. The more you volunteer with Red Cross, it becomes a full-time job. Then we went to San Antonio, and I was a home. I was uh, working in the Air Force Village, which is a nursing home, and I worked nights. And then from there we went to England, which I didn't work in England. That was my favorite place to live. Everybody would stay in bed, and since I'm the early riser, I'd get up and. We had what they call calor heaters. They use the same propane that you use for gas heaters, gas grills. You hook them up, and it has like a heater front to it. So I'd go to the different rooms, turn that on, get their clothes, because you got to remember, if you don't have any central heating, the inside of your shoes, the clothes in your drawer are as cold as the outside. 
So I'd give them their clothes and they'd put them underneath them in under the covers and got them warmed up that way and got dressed under the covers. And then by the time they got dressed, got out get into the room, the room was warm and then I'd be downstairs making breakfast. I had multiple sclerosis that year that Alicia had the cancer was diagnosed one week and then I would, woke up one morning and went to doctors and they said I had MS. I woke up one morning and uh, from the tip of my finger, a narrow band about this, if you go like this, just that step all the way down the side to my little toe. Well, classically, when you think of various problems and issues, it's either this leg or this arm. It doesn't connect. No one would believe me that it was that. It's the way it was. And what was so annoying is that it was extremely tender and sensitive. Clothes would hurt it. If I put my arm down on a desk, you know, bare skin-like, it would just burn like fire. One of the biggest issues was my memory. I had terrible time remembering things. So after two years in recovery, massage was able to... Charlie convinced me to try it, and he was kind enough to go with me, believe it or not, to help me get through the, the classes, and he took the 100-hour class as well. I found out later that he did that so that if I did get real sick, he could massage me. When I wasn't working, I had time to do other things. So I started going to uh, once a week training at the fire station. And then uh, so I, you carried a pager. And, and if you were available, then you responded to, to fires. One 4th of July, she said, you know, you've got to turn the radio off. You know, we've got company coming over. We, you don't want, uh, you know, we want, I want you to stay around. So somebody got the bright, bright idea uh, early evening to uh, uh, climb on the roof and look at the, at the fireworks. Well, I got up on the roof and you could see the glows of grass fires. So I turned the radio on and they were calling for anybody that could respond. So I was gone for the rest of the night. After I had retired, I, we moved to, retired to Colorado Springs, went to work for Laurel, and then uh, they were uh, sold to Lockheed. Uh, they closed the office in Colorado Springs and moved it to Las Vegas. And that's how we ended up there. I worked another two years for them. And then since I've never worked in Las Vegas since then, uh, all the work has been um, mid to East Coast. And this past October, I retired, retired. Till the next thing comes along. You're good friends, you say and talk and all that, but you also respect the other one. And know when they just had enough or when they need comfort. And we started out, I mean, really just as friends. And, and we've always been, you know, she's, she's still my best friend. So.